Hey, what's up YouTube? Chris Sider here, founder of Ex-Boyfriend Recovery. Today we're going to be talking about five signs that you can look at to tell if your ex is missing you. Now these signs are going to be based on real life experiences. Well, mostly real life experiences based on my experience of going through breakups and missing exes. But before we dive into that, the first thing I would always recommend for anyone who's new to this process and is interested in learning how to get your ex back is to actually go to our website www.exboyfriendrecovery.com and take the special quiz that we have designed there that will actually tell you what kind of chance you have of getting your ex back. If you're interested in taking the quiz, simply look in the description link below this YouTube video. Click on the link you see there. It's going to take you to a page that will ask you quite a few questions about you, your ex, and your time together. Then based on how you answer those questions, we're actually going to run your answers through an algorithm, and it's going to spit out a score for you that will tell you what kind of chance you have of getting your ex back. So again, if you're interested in taking this quiz and learning how to get your ex back, it's free. It should only take you two minutes to complete. You can just simply pause this video, look in the description link, click on that link you see there, and we're going to hook you up. All right, let's begin. Today we're going to be talking about signs that your ex misses you based on real stories. And the real stories are actually going to be coming from my life and I think I'll be taking just a few from other people's situations that I've seen. Uh, I think it's important, especially when you're looking at a topic like figuring out if your ex is missing you or looking for signs on if your ex is missing you is to actually talk to an actual ex or someone who has missed someone um, after a breakup. And I think I'm probably the perfect person to actually tell you stories like this or tell you signs to look for because I've actually broken up with my ex, my very first ex-girlfriend ever, I was the one who broke up with her, and um, I have some interesting stories to share. Um, so the very first sign that I think you should really keep an eye out for, especially if your ex misses you, is having them show up in person, and I'd like to tell you a story. Uh, so the first thing you really need to know about my breakup with my very first ex-girlfriend uh, is that... Um, I was 18 at the time, so uh, I was just transitioning from high school to college. She was 17, I believe, and was a junior in high school, so I was a senior and she was a junior, and um, we ended up uh, dating my senior year of high school, and then the summer in between the transition from high school to college, we broke up. I, of course, got really sad for a while. I went on a few dates with someone new, and eventually I missed her enough to where I showed up at her school. Now, this is kind of a weird story, but the, the thing you have to understand is we got into a, a pattern throughout a relationship where um, we both went to the same high school together, and I would always show up early so that we would have some extra time alone time together at the beginning of school. Her parents would drop her off maybe like an hour before school started. Uh, I was on the cross country team. We always would have to show up like five at 5 a.m. in the morning to go running and uh, I would be there and we would get like an extra hour together and it would be nice and, and something to, um, I guess, bond each other. And so um, she was in the habit of having her mom drop her off all the time. And really, after we broke up, um, the the turning point for me is I really didn't miss her up until I actually went on a date with someone new. And I'm on this date with someone new, and I literally have the thought while I'm on this date with this new person is, wow, you know, dating actually felt a lot better when I was with my ex. And it started to make me think that... Um, that, that maybe I should try to see her again. Um, I hadn't really talked to her very much until that point. It had been about two or three months since we had broken up. Uh, the school year had started up again, so I was in college, and she was in high school in her senior year of high school. And um, I thought maybe one day it would be kind of cool after I went on the date. Literally the next day I had this thought of, okay, Maybe what I can do is show up in the morning like like we kind of used to and um, surprise her. And I remember getting so excited and nervous about it the night before I was going to do this. I was going to show up and, and surprise her. And I don't know how I thought it would go, but I ended up doing it. I ended up showing up at her school. Now, I want you to think about the actions I had to take to do that. I had to show up early. I'm in college. I don't go to the school anymore. It's my old high school. I know her 
her parents have this tendency to drop her off early. I don't know if she has a car yet. Um, we are awfully young, but I actually had to wake up early. I had to make the conscious decision to drive to a school that I didn't attend anymore, which is in hindsight, very creepy. And I did this all to see my ex and something really interesting happened. I remember going to, to bed the night before I was going to do this and being nervous and I didn't sleep very well. I didn't sleep well, and I ended up waking up early because I'm so like hyped up on how this is going to go. I have no idea what I'm going to say. I'm planning what I'm going to say out. And nothing is like good. I don't even know what I'm trying to get, but I do it anyways. I ended up showing up at the school and I show up about an hour before she's actually due to come. And the crazy part is no one is there except staff. So I'm literally the only, you know, high school aged person and I'm not even in this school anymore. Um, and I remember thinking this is sort of ridiculous. I'm showing up early to see someone who I don't even haven't talked to in months. Well, what am I expecting to happen here? But nevertheless, I'm thinking I'm going to stick this out. And it really wasn't until one of my old teachers literally pulled me aside and said, what are you doing here? Didn't you graduate? And we kind of caught up a little bit. And I told her, yeah, I graduated. Um, I'm just meeting a friend. And um, she didn't really say much after that. But her doing that was enough to make me realize how crazy of a thing this was that I was doing, that I missed my ex enough to actually show up at the school. And so, it, I don't know, it was just like ha having a heavy dose of reality suddenly dropped into my lap and it caused me to actually leave. It caused me, after this happened, thinking I'm thinking to myself, what am I doing? I got in my car and I left. I never ended up connecting with her. Now, I probably would have connected with her if she showed up 20 minutes earlier than she normally had, um, and it would have been a disaster because I later found out that she was actually dating someone at the time. She had already moved on, and... The crazy part is I really don't know what would have happened if I had seen her. I didn't really know what I was going to say. I, you know, I thought maybe we would hug and sort of reconnect. And I don't know if I was looking to get back together or not. I think I was just lonely. I had just been on a date with someone new and was sort of like, eh, I'm not feeling this. You know, it felt safer to be with my ex. And I think it's an important thing to look at if you start to see your ex calling, texting, or showing up into your place of work or, or, or calling and texting you at late hours of the night, it's a good sign that they're thinking about you and they potentially miss you. So that's the first sign I wanted to talk to you about. The second sign is not giving all of your items back. Now, this is something that I really don't have a lot of personal experience with because I've never done anything like this before, but this is something I see in our private Facebook group all the time. Now, if you're interested in getting access to our private Facebook group, getting access to me and the coaches and a lot of the moderators there who are, and a lot of the people who are going through breakups that want to help you, just look in the description link of this YouTube video, there should be a link to help you understand how to get access to that. But one of the things I see a lot of exes doing, especially when they actually miss their partner, is not giving all of the items back. Everyone knows that when you go through a breakup, you have this customary period of where you exchange items. You know, you have items at his house, he has items at your house, she has items at your house, so on and so forth, right? So sometimes you'll find an ex will actually hold on to a specific item. They won't give all of the items back, but th this thought literally goes through their mind where they're saying, well, maybe if I don't give her all of her items back or all of her things back, I can see her again. Or maybe if I don't give him all of his things back, I can see him again. And that's actually a really good sign that they miss you because that means they want to see you again. And I think that's kind of the trend, the trend that you need to understand. If someone misses you, it means they want to see you again. So that's the second thing I want you to keep an eye out for, the second sign to look for. The third sign is actually if they get angry when conversations don't go their way. Now, um, <laughs> sorry. Now, the thing you need to understand is I'm actually going to tell you a personal story here is uh, for me and my ex, my very first uh, breakup ever, um, a big point of contention throughout a relationship was her parents. Now, her parents, I'm they, they were pretty nice, but her dad was a little kooky. Kooky to the point where I remember for prom, when I was going to take her to prom, he answered the door with an AK-47. He thought it was a joke, but for someone who's already nervous, 
it freaked me out. And this is, I'm not even making the, this up. This is a real story. And that just, he, it was, he was a little over controlling. He, he was a little out there with some of his ideas and beliefs. And I will never forget um, that after the showing up at the school incident, which to my knowledge, my ex never found out about. Uh, I remember a couple of months go by and somehow we got back in touch. We somehow started reconnecting um, and we ended up having a conversation and I heard through the grapevine before this that she had dated someone else or she was currently dating someone else. And um, we kind of, uh, interestingly enough, we, we kind of... Um, the, the first conversation we had on the phone when we kind of reconnected, uh, she never mentioned she was dating anyone new. And so all throughout this uh, this time that we're talking to each other, uh, she never mentions that she's dating anyone new, even though I know she's dating uh, someone new. And I remember after the conversation, we agreed, hey, let's talk again tomorrow. It was kind of like, oh, let's maybe see if we can reestablish this pattern. At least that's how I felt on my end. Now, the interesting thing is... Um, throughout this period of waiting for the next conversation in the next day, I'm thinking, well, I, I'm going to see if I can get her to see, like show up and, and see me in person. I, I'm going to see if I can get a date with her essentially. And it will be a way to prove to her if she takes that action that she still has feelings for me. And something interesting happened. The next conversation occurs. The second conversation, we start talking back and forth and I drop sort of like, Hey, maybe we should get a cup of coffee sometime, and here is her excuse for why she cannot do that. She says, you know, my my dad told me that I, I can't date, I shouldn't date, and this obviously set me off for a number of reasons. Number one, she's dating someone new, I know that for a second. Number two is, why would you let your dad or even your parents control your dating life? That makes no sense to me whatsoever. And I ended up getting very angry, flying off the rails, because I knew she was lying, even though I didn't tell her I knew she was lying. And I just got angry because I lost control of the situation and I wasn't getting my way. And I think that's a good indication that your ex not only just misses you, but they're when they want a certain thing to happen and they and they don't get it, it shows that they care on some level, and that's what you're looking for there. So the next sign is actually calling your best friend to talk about you, and this is another example of a story from my life. So the thing you need to understand, I don't think I ever told you how my breakup with my very first ex went down, and really if I were to, to chart the trajectory of what that relationship looks like or looks like, it was a little bit like this. The first, I dated her for a total of nine months, and the first two months were glorious. It was that honeymoon period phase, and then something happened where it peaked off and everything from that point went downhill. Now, the peak, the the point where it's the highest, where my satisfaction is the highest, and the, the turning point of when it goes down is actually occurred around the second month I was dating her. And she told me she was sleeping over at her best friend's house. And her best friend decided that she was going to, uh, or one of her friends, I don't remember if it was her actual best friend, that they were going to go uh, to this guy's house. And they ended up spending a lot of time over there. Um, I It seemed to be kind of like, she, she seemed to be a little iffy on the details on if they slept over there. And I wasn't comfortable with that because I'm something fishy was about it. Right. And ever since that point, everything went downhill. I started picking fights. I'm insecure. The insecurity starts uh, boiling up. And it, by the end, we were picking fights every other day. And that's not an exaggeration. And the breakup itself actually occurred when my buddy and I were actually going on a road trip to go to a theme park, like one of those roller coaster theme parks that's that's I lived in Texas at the time that was really big in Texas. It's called Six Flags over Texas. So it's about three or four hours away. He picks me up really, really early in the morning and um, I'm texting my ex and we start having a fight um, through the text message and I get frustrated with the conversation. And so I say, you know, I'm done. Now I meant I'm done in the context of the conversation. Um, and I, after that, you know, after I said that, I'm like, I don't even care what she responds. I am just going to simply turn my phone off and let, let that be what it is. And so me and my buddy, we go to the theme park. We start having some fun. A few hours go by. I, I leave my phone in the car, uh, but I get kind of curious to see like, okay, you know, I like, I ended this conversation abruptly. 
I'm pretty sure uh, my ex is like boiling inside. She's probably, or my girlfriend at the time, she's probably sent me like a million text messages like apologizing or um, saying, you know, like, why did you stop talking to me or what have you? And so I ended up uh, going to the car, turning my phone back on and nothing. She has not sent one text to me, which of course is like, that's weird. So I send another text to her, just sort of like to, to touch base and say like, hey. And her response is immediate. I mean, it is immediate. Here's her response. Wait, why are you texting me? You just broke up with me. And that's where I see I, I she, she took the I'm done uh, text that I, I sent as I'm done with the relationship, not I'm done with the conversation. Now, it's at this point that I am at a crossroads. I can simply clear up clear up what I truly meant by the I'm done or say nothing and go down the path that I I chose, which is go and, and assume it's a breakup. Now, I've never been through a breakup in my life before. This is my first big relationship. I don't really know exactly how you're supposed to feel. I, I, you know, I've read a lot and understood a lot about people talking about breakups and how it's this horrible thing and everything. And I felt very numb afterwards. And I felt my emotions kind of like, like a pendulum just swinging back and forth, back and forth. One minute I hate them. The next minute I'm missing them. Right. And I'll never forget. One of the things that I did was I, um, I ended up talking to her friend a lot. And I, in a weird way to me, it was sort of like, okay, I know if I talk to her friend, it will get back to her and she'll kind of get some updates on me indirectly. And so I ended up talking to her friend and calling her friend and having a three hour conversation with her friend. And I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know why I was okay with it. But to me, it was just something I needed. I felt I needed to do. It was some, someone other than my own friends that I could talk to about how I was feeling about the relationship. And, uh, I always got along great with her best friend. And so we talked for like a three or four hour conversation one night. And I knew this was all going to get back to my ex, but I just didn't care. I just needed it for me. And I think that's a, that's a good indication that, that if someone does that, that they're lonely or that they missed a person that they're thinking about. And uh, that was certainly the case with me. So that is a sign to look out for with your ex as well. Now, the next, the next thing um, is, the next sign that I would say to watch out for is having your ex suddenly block you and then unblock you on Facebook. And this is something that I did extensively. Um, or just unblocking you or blocking you in general on pretty much anything. Now, uh, Facebook, I really hated Facebook when I was dating my ex because I had a tendency to always log in and see what she was doing, see if she was posting photos, seeing like what her new boyfriend looked like, seeing all of that stuff. And the interesting thing about it is I remember specifically wanting her to cry and look depressed and be sad. And she didn't on Facebook. Um, I would literally log in every single day seeing like, okay, this for sure. She, she's very bothered by this breakup. She has to be depressed or eating ice cream and kind of feeling like I'm feeling. And she just didn't portray that on Facebook at all. She always posted these happy photos of her and her friends out having fun. And it really, really irked me. And it made me mad to the point where I recognized that me logging on to Facebook and looking at her profile extensively just became unhealthy. So I decided to block her and it was a healthy thing for me, but it didn't mean that I wasn't thinking about her. That didn't mean that I wasn't wondering what she was up to. So maybe a few weeks go by and I would unblock it real quick to, to look, um, and see what was going on with her profile and then block it again. And I kind of went through that sort of phase, um, where I'd block her and then unblock her, block her and unblock her. And if you start seeing that happening with your ex, it's a good sign that they miss you. No, no, we talked about five signs here that your ex potentially misses you. What, you know, and a lot of these are based on real stories that happened to me or other people. Now, I do want to say there are more than five signs total, but these are five signs that I personally went through that I can definitely have definitive proof and say, yes, this actually happened. But if you have a sign and you'd like to share it with everyone else, hey, do that in the comments of this YouTube video. We welcome that. And we'll see what we can do about responding to you. I try to get around to responding to my YouTube comments as much as possible. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult than I'd like, but we will definitely try to respond to your comment. And um, yeah, that's it.